So I'm going to ad hoc this bit of video. I'm sorry for the unsteadiness of my camera work. My name is Neil. This is the Shadowtron blog. And here we go. So I've been blogging a bit about this uh, Five Fish EL2 constant current load. It's sitting here on the bench. I'll show you my setup. So if we pan over to the power supplies, I apologize for the mess on the bench. The upper supply is a Rigol DP832. The bottom supply is a Rigol DP811. The bottom supply is capable of 200 watts. I've currently got it set to 40 volts output with a 5 amp current limit. Uh, although the output is on on it, there's no current draw at this time. The upper supply is simply supplying the 12 volts to power the uh, EL2 electronic load. It's currently on as well. If we come back over to the load, you'll see the power LED is on and the fans are flashing. I have the current sense output through the uh, DMM probes that comes up to my 3058 uh, Rigol voltmeter. You can see that currently it shows one milliamp of current draw. I do have the 10 turn pot all the way down to zero. And finally, on my Rigol DS1054, I'm sitting on the 100 millivolt scale, simply monitoring the output of the power supply, and that's tapped off down here on the BNC jack. Uh, you probably have noticed all of my lab gear is Rigol. I did a major upgrade recently to Rigol gear. So let's go ahead and bring the current up to a couple of amps. I will bring the camera up so that you can see the current draw here. Again, this is using the current output of the EL2, which outputs one millivolt per milliamp. So what you're seeing there is the one millivolt is actually one milliamps of current draw. I will start to bring the constant current load up. There's 400 milliamps, 473, 577, we'll see if I can get it right spot on an amp. Uh, using a 10 turn pot on the constant current load does make getting very precise possible, although it's even tricky here. This is actually a cheap Chinese 10 turn pot that I brought in while we're close enough. There's 998 milliamps, so that's just shy of an amp. Current draw on the load. If I come over to the DP811, you will see it showing exactly one amp of current draw. I'm going to go ahead now and bring it up to four amps. On the bottom digits on the power supply, you can see the amount of energy, the number, you know, watts being dissipated. You'll see it quickly coming up towards, so there is, get it as close as I can to 4 amps, that shows exactly 4 amps being pulled. If we come back over to the DMM, we can see that there's 4 amps, 4.0048 uh, amps. Again, this is on the voltage display, just simply replace the V with an A in your head. So again, very nice. Uh, at this point, looking at the output of the power supply, I am on the 100 millivolt scale. I can see there is something in the range of around 400 milliamps of noise uh, where I'm hooked on. It's, it's the frequency set to here on the scope. Uh, gee, I'm not spotting it at the moment. Anyhow, not, not that that matters, but uh, I will change the time base a bit just to see if I can get a little bit better look at that. Uh, triggering on this is difficult. I'm not going to go off and try it. Uh, 400 or 40 volts out, 
you know, there's 30 or 40, 300 or 400 millivolts of noise there. I think that's well within spec for the power supply. Let's go ahead now and take the current up. Get as close to the 5 amps as we can get. This cheap Chinese 10 turn pot makes this a little bit difficult because it's got a sticky spot in it. We are at 5 amps. Uh, this is interesting. The If you look over here, you can see the voltage drifting around a bit. And interesting enough. Um, just sitting here observing what's going on. So it's interesting over here to see. The, actually, the voltage is clamped. That's what I missed. So the power supply output has clamped. You can see there's 5 amps draw. And you can see the voltage dancing around 13, 11. If I lower the current slightly, we get back the full 40 amp output. Uh, 4.98 amps. 4.99. So at 5 amps... At 40 volts, we're dissipating 200 uh, watts. So earlier, when I was a bit confused there, I had actually brought the current up slightly above the 5 amps. The power supply clamped. You may see down there towards the bottom left, uh, it says 05.00 amps. That is the clamp current I have set on the supply. That's the maximum. Let me bring this current back down so we get the full 40 volts. And get right on the 5 amps. So we should now be dissipating a full 200 watts of energy. I can come back over to the EL2. The heat sinks are a little bit above ambient. A temperature to the touch. Oops, I touched the fan. Sorry for the jerk on the camera. That always surprises me. We can come back up and see that the monitoring output on the EL2 is showing the 5 amp draw, you know, 4.999 amp. So it's very well in sync with what the power supply is presenting. So there you have it. Uh, the EL2 up and running. The power supply itself shows it's dissipating 200 watts. That full 200 watts should be being dissipated here in the EL2. I will let it run for a bit. See how warm these heat sinks become. Uh, I think I had mentioned in the notes on the blog that the highest temperature I had seen was about 90 degrees C on the uh, MOSFETs themselves. I will recheck that here shortly. Uh, again, I apologize for the mess on the bench. Benches always seem to be a mess. That just seems to be my reality. I hope you appreciate this video and uh, maybe learned a bit, maybe not. Look forward to your comments. Uh, thanks for watching.